Hello, if you're new here, my name is Alexis, and if you're a returning guest, welcome back. As you can tell by the title, today's video is going to be on how to grow a big butt fast. Now, I do wanna preface this by saying you can't grow a big butt overnight. I know, boo, tomato, tomato, tomato. That's just not how life works. But if you stay consistent and work efficiently by implementing some of these tips, you'll reach your booty goals in no time. Okay, let's get right into it. A huge part in growing your butt is your diet. Number one is going to be tracking your macros. You need to make sure you have a well-balanced diet and you need to make sure you're getting an adequate amount of protein. Now, if you wanna grow mass fast, you're going to be eating at a calorie surplus. But with the surplus comes extra fat and that's going to be evenly distributed where your body naturally carries that weight. If you stay at a maintenance level and gradually increase your calories instead of just going full force into it, you're able to still maintain your gains while keeping that extra fat off. Now I know from my experience it was difficult to go from eating you know my maintenance calories up to a surplus. With that being said some things that helped me through that were getting my liquid calories in, um, making really high calorie protein shakes were like top priority for me. I was drinking them two, sometimes three times a day. And you can make your shakes more high calorie by adding oats, nut butters, avocado, extra fruits. There's so many different ways you can do it. Those are just a couple of things that helped me. And when it comes to getting adequate enough protein, you need to make sure you're getting 0.8 to 1.5 grams of protein per pound on you. Now you're going to have to experiment and see what works best for your body because everybody's body is different. But if you don't get enough protein, you're never gonna meet your booty goals, period. Number two is diversifying your calories. Make sure you're eating complex carbs. Stop eating simple sugar carbs. Complex carbs are gonna be carbs that your body can actually use for energy versus being stored as fat. And that's going to include sweet potatoes, brown rice, oats, whole grains. And when it comes to protein, your protein needs to have a full amino acid profile. That means it needs to be a complete protein. And this might sound like like jargon if you don't know what I'm talking about, but complete proteins include quinoa, soy products like edamame, uh, tofu tempeh, seitan, lentils, chickpeas, buckwheat, amaranth. There's a lot of different complete proteins in the plant-based world. By getting a complete protein source, you're going to have all of the essential aminos you need to grow muscle. And don't skimp out on your micronutrients. Those are things that you need also. Make sure you're getting your vitamin contents in. And if you're not, make sure to get a multivitamin in. You can get your vitamins and minerals in through all sorts of vegetables and fruits. When it comes to fats, you need to make sure that you're eating healthy fats, um, avocado, olive oil, nut butters, coconut oil. Those are all things that I really recommend. But overall, you just need to make sure you're giving your body the nutrients that it needs in order to thrive and perform at its best. Number three is going to be to eat frequently. You need to make sure you're eating every three hours so that your body's not in any sort of deprivation, especially if you're plant-based and you vegans know what I'm talking about. After three hours, we're literally running on E, but I really believe in eating like very frequently to make sure that you're getting your calories in through the day so you're not cramming everything in for each meal. I like to snack a lot, which I believe has also helped me get to my, you know, my macros and my goals because I wasn't cramming them into a breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Number four is going to be to eat something with simple sugars with your protein after a workout. Now this is a viral hack on TikTok. I don't know if any of you guys have seen it. The simple sugars will spike your insulin levels and trigger protein synthesis. So it'll help trigger your muscle growth faster. People on TikTok were saying to eat a handful of gummy bears, which, you know, by all means, if that's what you wanna do. But I have found that with implementing those protein shakes with the higher calories in them and adding fruit in, it gives you the same sort of effect because fruit is a simple sugar. And I think it's a healthy alternative. Now we're gonna get into the working out half. Number five is going to be consistently hitting legs two to three times a week. Three times is the most optimal in my opinion. When I was doing this, I was seeing incredible results. I was doing splits with two days um, hammies and glute focused and one day with like a more leg quad focused day. I know originally when I started working out, I 
was told what everybody else was told was that you are to hit legs once a week and that's how you're going to reach your goals but I have never had that in my experience and I really feel that after I started working out two to three times a week on my legs that's when I started having like really noticeable growth so I would say definitely do that number six is going to be compound movement Compound movements are going to be your deadlifts, your squats, your hip thrusters, your bread and butter. The beautiful thing about compound movements is that it works out so many different muscle groups in one workout. So you're really working out efficiently. And in order to build that hourglass shape that everybody wants, you need to be, you know, making sure that your back is toned to create that illusion of a wider and narrower waist. When I started deadlifting and hip thrusting twice a week, it was such a game changer. Like I, I can't even express to you. I, maybe I have some pictures I'll pop up here and here, but it, it was just such a noticeable difference. And I put on so much mass in such a short amount of time. It was incredible. Number seven is going to be progressive overload. Now I'm sure you've heard about this, but what you probably don't know is that progressive overload isn't just adding weight. It's going to be slowing down your movements, making sure that mind to muscle connection is really strong. It's going to be adding more reps, um, more frequency. In my experience, slowing down and making sure that mind to muscle connection is really strong has been way more effective than just adding weight, especially if your form is lacking. It really offers you an opportunity to make sure you're, you're really getting your form down and preventing injury, and working the right muscles. Number eight, final and last tip, warming up and cooling down. Make sure before you work out to do dynamic stretches and afterwards do static stretches. This is important because the better your range of motion, the more potential for growth. You should also be doing activation exercises before any leg days. There are so many great ways to fire up your glutes before a workout. A couple of my favorite are kickbacks, clams, and hip bridges. These can be done with ankle weights or bands and also help that mind and muscle connection while really waking up your glutes before a big lift. Okay, that's all I've got for you. I hope this helped and I hope you reach your booty goals before summertime because you know summer is coming for us and you know it's a hot girl summer so. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.